Hello art students, today we are going to start on a project called Airplane Over Land in our virtual art class. This was a, um, a lesson that was developed by Deep Space Sparkle and um, I'm just going to get you started but this is what it will end up looking like. It's an airplane that's flying over a landscape that's full of all kinds of different fields and we're really going to focus today on space, texture, um, and color. So the first thing we want to do is get a piece of paper about nine, nine and a half by 12, and we are going to um, have watercolor paints if you have them, or markers, um, light colored crayons, uh, lots of different colors if you can. So I just pulled them out of my crayon box here. Um, a Sharpie marker, and that's basically it. So just things that you already have at home. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create the landscape, um, which is made up of, of, up of a lot of different um, rectangles. So what we're going to do is we're going to diagonally go through our paper with a light color. So I've picked a, a light spring green. So I'm going to start a line and go from one side to the other. And we don't want our, them to be really little, but we don't want them to be big either. So you know, about the size of four of your fingers together is good. So do parallel lines, okay? So we started one here diagonally through the paper, and then let's do another one about the width of my fingers, and then another one here, and then let's go on the other side and make lines going this direction. And so then the next thing we wanna do is come back through the other way. So we're actually making, looks like diamonds on our, on our paper, okay? You don't have to be exact. You don't need to use a ruler for this. Just eye it, okay? So some of them are going to be going off the edges of the paper. Now here's the fun part. The next thing we're going to do is um, crayon rubbings. Um, and there are a couple of different ideas for this. I have some plastic um, textures that I had in a, a set from a long time ago. There's a brick, there's stars, there's like a moonscape, bumps, corn. But you could also, um, you know, use your imagination and find some things like I found um, a ping pong paddle, for instance. So what you're, what you're going to do, let me show you with, let's do the bricks first. So each square is going to have a, a different color that you use, a light color. So let's put this one in the back here, maybe bring this pink one here. So I'm gonna rub on this and fill that square with that crayon color, okay? Now, it's okay if you go over the lines a little bit, but fill it, okay, fill it up, then put that aside. Let's try the ping pong paddle in a different color, okay? Put that one in the back so we know we already used it. Um, maybe we'll use the blue for this. Let's see what this one looks like. Now, I went this way, this way. Maybe this time I go this way, so use some variety of directions. Well, there's a little bit of a bumpy pattern. So that was a good try. Use your imagination. Can you find some corduroy? Can you find um, like beads that you could put in something underneath? Here's another idea that I thought of. Let's use um, let's use a um, another green. What if we did it over our watercolor paints? Okay, let's try that. Right. So use your use your creativity. We got some circles coming out there, okay? So the pattern has to be small enough, but it, we want it to be interesting because what we're gonna do after we fill this tech thing with textures is um, we're going to do watercolor over it and the, and the texture will come through it. So let's try, let's try this moonscape and maybe a different color here, this mauve. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so you get the idea. You can um, use just about anything, but it can't be too bumpy, otherwise your paper won't go down flat on it. Okay, maybe, 
Maybe one more. How about one with waves? Okay. Let's see. I, I think it doesn't matter what color. How about blue? Okay. Where's the waves? Right there. Okay, so you just, you're placing whatever your texture is underneath. And then you are filling up your landscape square with a, a crayon rubbing that's going to fill it all up. Okay, so that gives you an idea. That gets you started. Um, I did think of a couple of other things, um, like lace. Maybe a couple of, of things of lace that you could cut out and do underneath. Um, another idea, let's try this one. Um, maybe we'll do a pink one. What, what happens if we roll these crayons underneath and, and <laughs> let's see if they stay. That's cool, okay. So that, anything that's gonna stay flat, right? You could get um, maybe the side of a basket. And it's okay that my paper is, is getting a little bit um, rounded over these. That's a really neat one. Okay, so use your imagination. You'll come up with some great ones. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna get our watercolor paints, any kind of brush. Now you're gonna be filling large areas here, so probably, a little, you know, this size brush or something a little larger. Okay, now we're thinking again. Here, let me put my textures away here. All different colors, okay? When you're up in an airplane and you look down and maybe all kinds of different fields, maybe there's some tulip fields and there's um, one that has like a lake over here. So you're thinking all kinds of different colors. Now these don't have to necessarily be light colors, right? What if we did like, a bright pink over this blue. Ooh, now see, your crayon is resisting the watercolor paint, right? So that is another cool thing about this project. Um, like I said, we're working with space. We're trying to give the effect. Um, now, what if you don't have watercolor paints and all you have is um, markers? There's a, a neat trick, instead of just using the marker, because it, it, it might work right on, but you can also put it in the water, dip it in the water, and then, let's see, which one should we do? And then go over it. You make it really wet, see? So it's, it, it is more like watercolor, okay? So if you don't, don't have watercolor paints, then this is a really good, fun thing to try. Maybe you want to do a little bit of both, okay? So I keep dipping it in my water and I'm using the side of my marker, not the point, so that I'm filling as much. But you do see that you're going to see marks this way. Um, so it's not as good as using the paints, but still it's a fun idea. Let's do one more. Um, okay, how about this real pretty purple? over the green, okay? So use, use as many different colors as you can. If you have a set of, of um, I would, I'm not sure I would use black or brown. Let's make it really colorful, um, but you can. Okay, now I went this way and I went that way. And that gives it a little bit of interest. You can go all the same direction. The other thing that you can do with watercolor paints is, um, you can wet an, a whole area like this, right? Wet on, so you're wetting it, and look, all that crayon's resisting, but you get it all wet first. And let's do a real pretty um, bright, sunshiny yellow, okay? Then it goes over really easily if you wet it first. So you can try a bunch of different things. This is this is gonna be a, and do you see that my um, crayon that I began with is still showing as well? Okay, let's do one more color. What have we not done yet? Maybe a green, a nice bright green. Let's see, over here. So I I like to um, pick a color that's, that's different from, ooh, that's bright. So maybe I add a little bit more water there and just spread it out. 
okay? That's a really bright green. Oh, I like it though, okay? Um, so I'm picking a like a complementary color to that pink that was underneath, you know, green and red, which pink is a kind of red um, underneath it. Okay, so that gives you an idea of how that's going to be. So while you, now you're gonna fill it all the way up, all the, the way to the edges, even these little pieces here, okay? So that your paper is completely um, covered like this. It's from one side to the other with crayon rubbings and colors, okay? So we're gonna put that aside and we're gonna bring our drawing guide and we're gonna draw our airplane, okay? Now, it shouldn't be an entire piece of paper like this, otherwise it's gonna cover a lot of your picture. So maybe just up on, you know, the, do it from the short end, okay? Um, and I probably needed a pencil but I'm gonna do this in marker. Oh, here's a pencil. Um, sometimes it's good to start with pencil first. Um, so, just so that we stay in, a, in, a, in an area that's good, I'm actually going to half this nine by 12 piece of paper so that my airplane is not bigger than this, okay? So right through the middle, um, we're gonna make the body so that you have room for the wings on either side. So making a nice sort of rounded, curvy with a swoop, okay? And then the second thing you're gonna do is you're gonna come back over here and you're gonna bring this sort of up and then it goes down and it meets this. So that's the nose of the plane. Okay, let's add the wings. So about right in the middle, I'm gonna put a little thing here and one down here because they should be coming out of about the same area. So this one up here is going to come up and down. And this one is going to go down and then up, okay? So this plane wouldn't fly yet, would it? <laughs> Needs a few more things. It needs the tail, it needs the, um, the wing parts on the tail, just like a bird, right? So again, just little bumpy things, and one going this way, okay? Now, um, you can make rounded windows, um, or you can make rectangular windows, but the, the really important window to make is, is the one where the pilot can see, <laughs> okay? And then, I don't know, I think I'll make mine um, sort of rounded rectangular. So instead of just, because um, that's how I think of um, airplane windows being. Now think about making them about all about the same size, okay? And of course there would be some passengers, okay? Um, looking out of the windows, but this is not a big enough plane probably. Now I am getting a little bit smaller. But as long as they're about the same, okay? And if you wanna add some details on your plane, um, you could add some stripes. Okay, so stripes would be on both of the wings, right? You could, add, you could add a star, you could think about what's your favorite kind of airline, and um, you know, maybe it has stripes going this way now. You use your imagination, okay? Now, um, you're gonna want to go over this in um, probably a nice thin Sharpie. Um, you could use a thick Sharpie, but the important thing now is um, to give it, um, some dimension. It's really important for it to have um, the way the way that you color it is. Um, so this is a little bit gives you an idea. Okay, if this is flying over the landscape, then the sun is going to be shining from one side or the other. So this would be a good time to actually um, have some colored pencils. Okay, or you can use crayons, okay? 
But if I get a nice, oh, let's see, just a nice blue colored pencil. Let's think about the sun coming from, you know, way up here, all right? And um, you need to decide if the sun's coming from above, then you're gonna start coloring this in darker on the bottom and then lighter, lighter and lighter. So dark along the bottom and then let up. Now, see how I'm going back and forth? I'm sketching with my pen, with my colored pencil here. So I'm going to not fill in the whole plane necessarily, I, but I want it to be darker on the bottom, okay? And under here um, on the, on the back wings. So I'm almost, it's almost like you are, um, you're going along the line that you made and then with a darkness and then getting lighter and lighter and lighter. Okay. Um, the same over here. Okay. So everywhere with you decide where the sun is and then you think about what's going to be in the shadow and that's going to be darker. Okay. Now, you could fill in the whole thing with color, but make sure that one part of the wings, because this is a rounded object, we want it to look round. We want to give it dimension, we can give it a space. So we're going to come all the way over here, right, with this dark line and come up here. We want, might want to get, an, um, maybe I'll use my yellow crayon, you know, fill in with maybe a yellow would, would be a good choice. Okay, so you can use different um, art supply tools. I could have used my yellow marker for this, okay? And maybe, um, you know, my stripes are yellow too. Now I have not gone over this in Sharpie, but I'm just trying to give you an idea of how to. So again, this would maybe be more in shadow over on this side, right? Getting lighter and lighter. Um, underneath here okay and also a little bit on this side too because it's um, because this is rounded it might not be quite as dark as what's underneath but hopefully that gives you an idea you keep sketching making it darker and coming up and up and up and up lighter 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 dark here lighter lighter if you want to practice on another piece of paper, um, you know, practice going dark and getting lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter, dark, lighter, 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 lighter. That's called value with color. If you did that with a pencil, then, it, it, you know, value is black and white, but when you use color, okay, so you could practice. There's the curve. Come back to that line and then get lighter and lighter. You don't want to see that there's a line, right? You want it to, to look shaded and you don't want it to be dark, dark, dark. You don't want to necessarily see all of your little lines. So that's why I'm going back and forth and it's called sketching. So obviously we need to add some uh, shadow on this one, right? Okay, so I'm kind of going, coming in with a line and then getting lighter. Always coming back to the edge and then coming out again. And maybe a little bit on this side, right? So what we're gonna end up doing, and I would definitely come around the nose, not too dark and definitely not that dark on the top because that's where the sun's coming, right? Now, then you're gonna want to cut out your airplane and then it's going to go on top of the landscape that you made eventually, okay? Um, and we're actually going to place some things, maybe a couple of layers of cardboard so that it, and, and then glue it so that it is above our landscape and it actually puts a shadow on this. So once this is all dried, um, you're gonna add some details to it, like um, let's decide, let's think about what kinds of things um, besides just green areas and different kinds of crops growing. There might be like a river, okay, that's going across the landscape, right? So you just you can use a marker for this and maybe it forks off and it goes this way. Use your imagination, okay? 
Um, then another thing that you can do is come back in and you can use crayons or let's say that maybe some browns. I'm gonna say that um, there's a little town here, so there's like some tiny little buildings, okay? Maybe I use some different colored browns. Um, they don't all have to be brown, but you know, if they're up above, you know, maybe there's a really big building here. Um, maybe there are some little cows or sheep in here. So you can add all kinds of details. And then once you've sort of done that in a couple different places, just to make it really have a lot of interest, <clears throat> then you're going to want to pick a few places um, uh, to, where there might be some roads. So there were probably, and maybe then use your, so the road would not be going through the, the river that we made but it would be going past this town that we made, okay? So maybe going over our crayon and maybe making it even a little bit thicker, okay? So do this in a couple places. So this gives it a little bit of dimension, okay? Let's maybe do it here, all the way up to the river, and then this way. Okay, so you're gonna, maybe um, there's a road that goes along the river, so use your imagination, okay? And um, so these are roads. And they probably would not be going through all the different <laughs> parts of the, you know, maybe the farms, maybe there's big farms, maybe you draw like a, a silo. Um, there's a big farm, you know, barn here. And remember, it's going to be seen from above, so a silo would be a round thing there, right? And then maybe, you know, there's a like a, a tractor. So think about what things are going to look like from above. So then when we cut out our airplane, and this is all filled, and we've added a couple of... of um, maybe um, a couple pieces of foam or a couple of layers of um, cardboard, then we're gonna have a three-dimensional piece of artwork. And so hopefully that gets you started and showed you how to use a lot of different kinds of tools. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what you come up with. So have fun.